Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Full Spectrum Survival. You know, we've been asked a lot of questions lately about something that most of us take for granted. Uh, because although it can be an advanced skill, it is generally not thought of as advanced. And uh, it's overlooked a lot of times, and that is the importance of fire. Um, fire is one of the most versatile tools in the woods. Fire is going to allow you to cook your food, get clean. The smoke from the fire is going to uh, get the bugs, the chiggers, um, all the bacteria off of you. The soot, the ash from the fire, mixed with water to make lye, add some animal fat into it. You've got soap, uh, the charcoal, if, you're, if you've been poisoned by something, you can crush that up and uh, eat that and it will help treat, the, treat you for the poisoning. Um, really uh, boil in your water fire has so many uses out in the woods um it really is a uh, it, it is a godsend in preparedness and in bushcraft um for the first m men that found it i don't know whether it was divinely inclined or uh or they just happened you know like we're taught in school or like i was taught in school that some caveman was just looking out his cave one day and a lightning bolt struck a tree and he said, ooh, I have fire and wanted to recreate it. That may or may not have happened. Um, it, it doesn't sound to me like the most plausible uh, way that we discovered fire, but nonetheless, man discovered fire and has put it to great use ever since. I'm sure it has helped us in our evolution as human beings. Um, I think everybody out there should try their hardest to learn to make fire in as many different conditions and as many ways possible. Uh, I know when I was first getting into preparedness and into bushcraft, sure you could make a fire or I could make a fire in my backyard fire pit when I lived in the city, but getting out in the woods where it's rained for three days, the wood is just the wood on the ground is just soaked all the way through, even the wood up in the trees is so damp. Uh, it was really a challenge to be able to make a fire. Um, that was a hindrance in my learning of bushcraft and my learning of preparedness. And I think everyone should get out there and try it. I know once I saw that hindrance, I attacked it and I started uh, making fire in as many conditions as I possibly could with different items that I had available to me, whether it was uh, char cloth and uh, spark from a lighter, um, magnifying glass, uh, you know, a, a glass filled with water, uh, same principle as magnification of the sun's rays, um, flint rod, magnesium rod, ferro rod, um, potassium permanganate, just every different way that I could, uh, you know, with a nine volt battery and steel wool, with a uh, car battery and wires, uh, of course, do that safely. Every way that I could go about it, I started to learn how to make fire because when you need fire, you usually really need it. Um, if you need it to boil water because you're lost in the woods, you really need that fire. And if, if you've experienced hypothermia or dehydration or uh, haven't eaten for a couple of days, that is going to cut down on your ability to make fire. So uh, I went out there and I started trying to make it in as many different conditions with as many different implements as I could and, uh, and really enjoyed the process. One of the most rewarding for me was a friction fire with a bow drill. Um, I was living in the city at the time and me and my wife would go out and take a car ride and just find as many different kinds of wood as we could. Uh, we'd identify the tree, take the wood back, and, uh, and I would try at home to make a uh, bow drill friction fire. And I was living in the city, like I said, and I would do it in my front yard in the driveway and the neighbors would come out and they would look at me and they'd really wonder what I was doing. I didn't know whether they thought I was some crazed, uh, you know, woodsman or, uh, or what I was doing out there. But eventually they would all come over and, and they would ask, well, you know, what are you doing? And I'd tell them I'm making fire by friction, you know, just like the Indians used to and just like uh, man before has. And they became really interested. It was a great learning tool for them. It got to the point where all the neighbors who first stepped outside and looked at me with a real strange look on their face would then end up leaving sticks by the end of the driveway uh, for me to try because they enjoyed watching me try to make fire by rubbing two sticks together. Uh, I guess there wasn't anything good on TV at the time. So uh, they would leave sticks by the driveway. I'd pick them up, try it. Uh, they'd come over and ask them about it. It was a great experience for me. It was definitely one of the most rewarding because it really took me probably 15 
real hours to do it. And fire by friction, as all of you guys who have done it before can really attest to, it, it involves so many factors. Uh, it involves the wood type, um, hardness of the wood, the uh, baseboard, uh, is your spindle smooth, is your, uh, you know, is your bearing block smooth, is it creating too much friction on top? There's just so many factors of fire by friction uh, that you have to learn, you have to adapt to, and you have to overcome. And that's what part of what made it really rewarding for me was learning those. Uh, it is a diminishing skill if you don't practice it and you don't continually do it. Uh, it will diminish and you have to learn it again. You have to become accustomed to what a good piece of wood is that, you know, you can pick something up and can you indent your thumbnail in it? Okay, well that might work. Um, so get out there, try making fire. Uh, if you do fire by friction, I'd love to see the videos. I always enjoy watching them because that's close to my heart. Um, and I'm sure close to my wife's too because she would sit out there watching me huff and puff and trying to get it. Uh, get out there and try it. Uh, try Spark. Try, uh, you know, an old Bic lighter that doesn't have anything left in it. Can you get uh, dryer lint or can you get char cloth to go up with it? Uh, try wet wood fires because that's really important. Wax cotton balls. How many different variations of wood can you get to light with wax cotton balls? Just try all those different things because fire is, is one of the most important tools that we have out in the woods. Um, for anybody real new to preparedness or real new to bushcraft, no matter what you see on TV, please always boil your water uh, if you're not getting it from a known source. Even if you are getting it from a known source, if you've, uh, if you've drank from that stream before or last year or whatever, you don't know there could be a carcass uh, out of sight that you don't see that is breeding uh, bacteria and disease into the water. It is just not worth uh, what you will have to go through. Uh, and if you're lost in the woods, by all means, please find a way to boil that water. Um, what we do at, when we're boiling water is we will boil it first, uh, 10 minutes, just above and beyond the necessary. We boil it for 10 minutes and then we run it through charcoal or a charcoal and sand filter to get all the nasty taste out because we have a lot of sulfur nearby and uh, in our lake it really it doesn't taste very good. So we will boil the water and then run it through a charcoal and sand filter which will take that taste out and then we'll be able to enjoy the water that we have. So please if you're out there no matter what you see boil your water. Um, learn to make fire in all sorts of conditions and most of all get out there and enjoy the woods because that's what's important to us um, we just enjoy getting out here and trying these things it's fun to us and if they benefit us or somebody else through um, a time in survival or preparedness then that's even all the better so guys uh, please subscribe if you haven't please send us your comments and your uh, messages we enjoy reading every one of them it really gives us the encouragement to continue making videos we thank you all for your support and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask other than that we uh as december's here we hope everyone has a happy holiday season